On today's episode of the Get Off Our Lawn Show, Dave and I, in typical uh, curmudgeon fashion, talk about silliness like robots and Netflix and stuff like that. We ramble for a little bit. However, at about 20 to 25 minutes into the show, uh, with our ongoing theme of talking to fellow Dryden High School class of 1980 classmates, we'll be interviewing... Well, let me, let me back up here a little bit. So there's always somebody in your group that's uh, such a class act. Seems to have her act together or his act together uh, on top of the game academically, musically, in sports, and I do mean that one literally. Um, always non judgmental, great smile in the hallway, you know, just is always there for you, you know, in the class. Just such a great person. Well, the person that I think falls in that category is Lori Shirtliff. We knew it was Lori Munson. Um, just such a great gal. We interviewed her today to find out what she's been doing since we got off the uh, football field in 1980 and had a great conversation with Lori. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. So enjoy today's Get Off Our Lawn Show with Lori and uh, just enjoy the show. Oh, my Lord! So, folks, welcome to the Get Off Our Lawn Show. I am Dave, son of Garth. With me is the uh, Chadich to my Patak. He's the he's the Gok to my blood wine. He's also been known to play the lute in the Vulcan adaption of the hit show Cats, Mr. Dave Seymour. What's going on there, Dave? What's happening down there in the big NC? I'm shocked, Dave. I'm shocked. Why is that? Uh, because you brought up all of those past things that I had done, and I'm, and I'm having trouble remembering any of them because I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. So on today's show, we have a very special guest coming here in about 25-ish minutes, and we're going to have to stop this link, go to another link to start the show. Uh, another classmate of ours. Uh, Miss Lori, I hope I get this right. Dave. Shirtliff, right? Is that how you pronounce it, Dave? Is it Shirtliff? Lori Munson. Munson Shirtliff. Yeah, well, whatever. I don't want to. I don't want to misname her. That would be embarrassing. I don't want to do that. Misname her. I don't want to misname her. That would be embarrassing. Shirt left. Shirt left. Sure. So, uh, so in the meantime, Dave and I are just going to talk. You know, this is uh, people ask Dave, "What do you do on your silly show?" And basically, it's two curmudgeons. Talking to other curmudgeons, or in this case, it'll be a curmudgeonette, the Lori, and we just talk about crazy stuff, you know, in our lives and, you know, some daily things. We might do some, you know, some silly stuff. But what I want to do for the 15 or so minutes is I have, I see, and the, Dave got me, was, was very instrumental, no pun intended, in getting me to play the bass guitar. And over the course of the last few years, I've gotten Dave into cat boxes and Roombas. So having said that, I am curious as to how your Roombas are going, Dave. Is this have the Roombas changed your life? Have they Roombas. have they impacted you in your household substantially? The poop decks are much cleaner now. Yeah. That's that's a pirate reference. That is a pirate reference. I got that. It's nice. For those following along, right? <laughs> yes. You're the black to my beard. And yes. so uh <laughs> So the, the Roombas are uh, a very nice addition to the uh, the house, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it's kind of nice to have all of the floors uh, relatively cleaned up. Yeah, you know, and uh, swept on a we run them uh, every other day. Yeah, Monday, yeah. Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, I can't schedule them because we have baby. I have to, I have to pick up after stuff. Yeah, so I, I pretty much when, when Blanche and I leave the house, I just 
tell them to start cleaning and then everything's clean by the time we get back. So that's there's nothing worse than a baby stuck in a Roomba. That's correct. They clog they clog the tower every time. It goes for the automatic dump and uh the grandkids get wrapped around the roller and it's just not it's amazing. So yeah. so yeah, so I uh it started out with it started out with I would mention a few of these things to Dave and he was like, Oh, what version should I get? What uh what, what one should, should I get? What model should I get? And we eventually graduated because I started the I started the some most simplistic models. I mean, we're not all the way to the highest end Roombas yet, but we do have the self cleaning Roombas. And Dave's are at too, the uh, mid level, um, correct. Not too complex, not too easy, yeah. just right. Just right. Just so right. it's like the three bears in the Roombas. <laughs> it's the three Roomba bears. <laughs> so yeah, I uh, I'm, I'm sorry I got you a, you know into the into the Roomba addiction, but I'm really not that sorry because they're freaking awesome. Just like the cat box. Love my self-cleaning cat box, which, which we're trying to get our new cat adjusted to. Yeah. I know you're not going to get cat box talk on the Joe Rogan show, but here we are. Um, yeah, so Mandu is uh, – we're working. We're, we're trying to do the transition to our, our other – our new cat to the new cat box. He's not there yet. But uh, and after we lost Zeke the Elder, everything's a little bit different around here now. Oh, so, yeah. That right. was a is, is Apollo and or uh, Mandu uh, – Missing Zeke? Uh, Apollo's pretty much uh, just wants to chase cats. He's he doesn't want to bite him or or, or you know tear him up or anything. He's just one of those. Yep. There's a cat in my house. I have to corner him and bark at him a lot. Zeke got over it. He eventually got used to Zeke, but he hasn't got used to Mandu yet. So we're we're working on that. I still keep him pretty much separated. Every once in a while, I'll bring I'll bring Apollo inside, and he'll chase the cat around, and the cat will get cornered, and Apollo bark at him, and and Flash comes in, separates them, and you know, so we're. But Mandu's still not a full-grown cat yet. I mean, he's still got claws; we can defend himself. But yeah, he's just not there yet. Okay. So, all right. So next, so now we're done with Roombas and cat boxes. Next thing, Squid Game. <laughs> so I finished Squid Games last night. Okay. So you will not spoil anything for me. Okay. So give me your give me your synopsis. Uh. Without having any spoilers, I will say that uh, it's a worthwhile watch. Mm -hmm. It took about three episodes to get sort of into going. Agreed. I still don't like the main character. Oh, okay. He didn't grow on you at all. He didn't grow on me at all. And I'll tell you the other thing, too. Um, having grown up watching Godzilla movies overdubbed on Japanese language, mm -hmm. the... Uh, I think this is the Korean based movie, right? Korean. Yeah, Korean. Korean. And so um, the dialogue is not stunning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because at work, and I'm not sure why this happened at work mm -hmm. when, we had, when we had a few moments, um, it was, we didn't watch it with an overdub. We watched it with the, with the Korean language and we just read it. And ah. it was a totally different vibe. Totally different vibe. Um, really? The acting was more sincere. It wasn't, you know, like, like, ah. It didn't feel as campy as it did with the over. Did, did you watch a couple episodes with the America English overdubs? Yes, I watched the majority of them with the overdub. But I will say, I will say, it's better when you read the when you read the closed captions. When you read the captions, yes. and it doesn't necessarily have to sync up with the guy's mouth, Correct. mouth right? Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah, I, I thought I felt it was more compelling read the caption and watch them actually speak in their own language. And but the uh, the exit out of the series was, I thought, well done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it uh, as with all series, it did set you up for the next season, right? Yeah. It was, but, it was but, it, but it resolved a number of things in a, in a reasonable way. Yeah. That was, that was well done. Without, that was well done. Nice. Without, like, giving away the boat. Correct. Correct. And yep. it's still the biggest one ever on Netflix. It's the biggest show ever, ever on Netflix. I, now. I find that hard to believe. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's crazy. Now, if, if you wanted a series now, you know, I kind of like the Marvel series, all the Marvel yeah. series on Netflix are well done. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But this, this one just took over the world. Well, maybe that was the thing. Maybe this is worldwide. Yeah, that could as, be. As opposed to a Marvel thing, which might have been more uh, yeah. Americanized. Yeah. No, I just thought it was, I thought it was, 
I mean, you're right. What you're right. It took me a few episodes to get into it, but after after that, I was I was hooked. I was hooked. Well, the premise is is pretty good. Yeah. You know, without wrecking all that too, right? Yep. Agreed. Agreed. The the premise is thought provoking. It is thought provoking. Yeah. So, I uh, I saw that uh, Dune is coming came out here yesterday or the day before. Yeah. Dune. Well, you know, recently I had uh, switched out. So at and I switched out of, and the last time we were in the store, they talked us into some crazy programs and they threw in HBO Max on top of it. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, so for your at and uh, subscription, you know, I'm not plugging at and at all because I left at and my, my bill is literally almost half of what it was with at and Yeah. So anyway, they well, threw in at The reason I bring that up is because of Dune and the fact that they threw in HBO Max and, of course... It turned off the account and the HBO Max subscription one night before Dune was released. <laughs> and so my son texts me and he goes, hey, what's up with the HBO Max subscription? And? Did you cut me off, Dad? Yeah. Yeah. I, we changed the password so I couldn't get it. No, it just... <laughs> AT&T terminated it and the, and the monthly uh, renewal time... Bam, Dune yep. comes out. Wow. So it was pretty harsh. It was an abrupt stop. Yeah. Now, have you seen the new Dune? I have not. I think I think we're going to watch it tonight. I heard it was good. Yeah, I've heard I've heard it was good as well. So and we're, and we're gonna go see tomorrow's day day. Blanche and I are gonna go see the James Bond movie. Oh, I want to see the James Bond movie too. Now I went, I, I told you um last week, I think we chit chatted on the phone or something. I told you Viper. Or not Viper, but uh, yeah. Venom. Yeah. Venom was really good. I thought that was, if you can get the fa- past the fact that he, like, chews on people. Yeah. <laughs> if you can look past that, it's funny as all get out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I think Blanche, I, I'll give her the choice. I could go either way, but I think she'll probably choose. She'll probably choose the Bond movie. I know the Bond movie was, like, three hours runtime and viper if i venom was like an hour and a half <laughs> really really that long wow yeah so you can just go uh go make sure you're on a time budget where you can see it holy crap all right all right duly noted it was it was like lord of the bonds yeah you know with uh six quests and then they were like looking for the stuff and the ring and you know smeagol is coming up and all that kind of stuff Oh, before I forget, I had some folks send me some messages about our videos and wanted to know if this is a green screen. Folks, <laughs> this is this is real. This is this is this is my man cave back here. And this this is my my I've changed locations from the very first show that we did, or first couple of shows. This is yeah. now my laboratory. Yeah. So I've got my uh, need some flasks with some dry ice. Well, here's my microscope. In the Crown Royal. Nice. You know? So, yeah. And, uh, you know, my soldering stuff and some other projects I got going on. My wall of fame. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Stuff like that, you know. It's all good. Yeah. So it's my laboratory. So how much time do we got on this on this, on this this timer? What we got left? Uh, it is uh, 6.50 right now. So we got about five minutes. All right, cool. So we got, we got five minutes to kill. Yep. So, um, mm-hmm. So now that you're the big six zero, did you do anything special today or did you just kind of hang out today? Well, let's see. We got up and uh, Pam went and got her Bluetooth hearing aid. Oh, okay. Have you heard about these things? No. Okay. So she was having, without going into too much, she was needing a hearing aid. Uh-huh. So she's participating in a study where they give you one or give you two. So she's got one right now. But the latest hearing aids are Bluetooth enabled. So you can hook them to your phone or your TV or your car or whatever. And you, and it's got a microphone in the hearing aid too. So the call comes in, you tap it, you answer the phone in your head. Uh huh. You talk to it in your head. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so it's all Bluetooth and you can adjust all the uh, parameters, you know, the EQ settings and... Uh-huh. Levels and all that mess. It's kind of going like this all the time, a little, a little money, a little right. thing. Now you're doing app stuff, right? Mm, yeah. 
So yeah. what I'm going to have to do is get the same app and hook it to her earpiece and see if I can mess with it. Like I mess with my wife with the lights in the house with my stuff. Yeah, <laughs> exactly it. Right. <laughs> Turn on the Barry White oh, show. In the morning. Oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two o'clock in the morning. Hello, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> this is your conscience. I would like brownies for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. So then we had a nice little lunch. Um, then she went over and um, she had another appointment today to get her knee looked at. And then I, uh, I had scored a replacement motor for my Delta Tower uh, table saw. Okay. And uh, I was retrofitting and cleaning that up today to put it into my table saw. How's that for a day? That's a good day. That's a good day. I think there was a nap in there too somewhere. I'm sure there was a nap. Yep. Wasn't, wasn't gas leak related, was it? We got that nipped in the bud, right? The gas leak thing. <laughs> I guess we haven't. There he goes. There he goes. He's out. He's gone. Yeah, no, that was nipped in the bud last uh, May. I think it was. Like first week in yeah. May, something like that. House didn't explode. After I was there. Yeah. Yeah. After, didn't you smell gas while you were here? I did. And wasn't it like wearing and you then, out yeah, or something? And then after, after, you know, 20 years of never napping, all of a sudden I had to nap. I'm thinking, right. what's going on while I'm asleep in this house? Correct. <laughs> so you we start lure, to- we lure visitors in. Yes. <laughs> All fun and games. Do you wake up with a bruise? <laughs> yeah. And speaking of visitors, you know, we I just had a a, a visit from Phil Baki, like right yeah. after the show that we did. Yeah. Oh, Phil. And then he was then he like this week he's like out in like uh, New Mexico again or something like that on his little motorbike there. Hanging out with Elon Musk. Hanging something. out with Elon Musk. He went to the uh, the Baba Black Sheep Museum with a big uh, fighter pilot. You know the the you know the uh, yes the World War Two yes yeah the, them there things yes, <laughs> yes, yes the course airplanes yes yeah that was pretty cool he had a little clip of one landing you just can't you can't keep that guy down you just you can't keep that guy down and then he was like dirt biking with Nancy Williams unbelievable and hanging out in Yas with with Robin Brown. Yes. Like who, was, who, by the way, was flushing mice out of her drainage ditch today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was up that pipe, but it was the mice aren't there anymore. The mice aren't there. All right. So I guess we need to end this and uh, press on to our next segment. We're going to talk to Lori and uh, we'll, let's, let's, let's get, wrap this up and we'll, we'll see you guys in a bit. All right. We will see you momentarily. All right. Lori is connecting to audio. See that? Yep. I'm trying. Hey, hey Lori. There. You're getting there. <laughs> You're getting there. I'm getting there. <gasps> there she is. Yes. I am. Yeah. Hey. How are you? What's Great. How are you? Here. All right. Good. Thank you. Wow, we are so excited to have you. This this is for us. So this will be the third pack in the class president or class officer uh scenario here we got we've got all three of you guys on you're the you're the final peg in this this is so cool <laughs> how are you how are you, how are you doing I'm how are you good, doing thank you man i gotta tell you so it's we don't i think the last time you and i talked was probably the class reunion other than on facebook occasionally was the class reunion the 2005 class reunion yeah, something TC3. like that a tc3 correct a tc3 yep Whatever one that was. Yeah, yeah, five, ten. It would have been twenty-five, right? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was five, two thousand five. I remember you were our first retiree. Correct. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. I got a bottle of wine. I was the first re- first class retiree. No way. I, I way. was jealous. No I, way. I'm still jealous. I still am. <laughs> it didn't last for very. It didn't last for very long, but technically, yes, I was the first retiree. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So, Lori, so basically what we do here on the uh, Get Off Our Lawn show with our guest is we just open the floor to you. We want to hear, and you can tell us whatever you want to, whatever you don't want to, um, since you since we left the football field in 1980. So just we just want to hear, just give us up to now. How did you get from 1980 to now? To now. A brief summary? It, it's whatever you want to tell us. We won't ask you for any uh, uh, time is yours. 
I went to Cobleskill for floriculture. Okay. Okay. Yep. Learned how to design flowers and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, got married shortly after I graduated Cobleskill. Was that a four year program, two year program? Two. Two years. Two yeah. years. Yep. Ended up working at flower shops for about five years. Okay. And then uh, decided there was no money in that unless you own it. Yeah. So I uh, got a job in civil service. So what what town and, uh, were your flower worked shops? At various places. Uh, Arnold's. I worked at Dryden and Cortland. Okay. All right. And um, I worked at Anna's in Moravia for a while. Okay. All right. Stuck with it part time every mm -hmm. now and <laughs> all the holidays. Yep. Yep. But uh, when I got married, we moved to Elmira. And because okay. uh, my husband is a funeral director, did his residency mm -hmm. in Elmira. What year and was I, that? Oh, 83. 83? Okay. Yeah. You got married in 83? I got married in 83, yes. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. Like you, still married to the same guy. <laughs> well, not guy for you guys, but you know. <laughs> the same person that you started out with. <laughs> yep. yep. Yes, all three of us are all in the same club. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All we right, outlasted so, a few, right. but. Uh, and then my husband and I started a funeral business in mm -hmm. Genoa, and then one in Groton. And in the meantime, I kept working other jobs. Okay. Yeah, and, but then and uh, uh, right well, I worked at the high school for 16 years in the library at Southern oh, Cayuga. When, which high school? Southern Cayuga, out in the middle of a cornfield in. Uh, Poplar Ridge, New York, over it's mm -hmm. Genoa, Aurora, King Ferry. Okay. District. Wow. So, yeah, huh. I worked there for 16 years. And then when my youngest graduated from high school, I got a job with uh, Ithaca, Town of Ithaca, DPW. So, mm -hmm. I don't drive the dump trucks, but I, uh, you know, do the paperwork in the place. <laughs> you back them up. But you could drive a dump truck if you wanted to, huh? I do have a manual, yeah, a standard drive pickup truck, so I probably could, although they're all automatic now, so. Yeah, nobody drives a stick anymore. Some millennial <laughs> anti-theft device. What's that? It's a millennial anti-theft device to have a manual transmission. Correct, yes. Yes, it is. And I found that when I was at college, by having yeah. a, a stick, nobody uh -huh. borrowed my car. Exactly. Because they didn't know how to drive it. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, no, I, uh, I kept busy with the got three kids, mm -hmm. all doing well. So yeah. give me, give me the ages, give me the years, give me the, give me the breakdown there. Uh, my oldest is twenty nine. Okay. And she uh, went to Ithaca College, well TC three, then Ithaca College, mm -hmm. and at the moment she. He just got a job with GE Wind Energy out in Schenectady. Nice. So oh, she's okay. a, nice. a media coordinator for the North America Wind Power. I'm not sure. It's a really long title. Yeah. Yep. But uh, she just started there a few months ago. And um, my son, Riley, is, well, Rebecca is my daughter. Riley, my son, is uh, in Alaska. He's the emergency services coordinator for cooper landing fire department wow, wow. that's cool yeah. we're in yeah. alaska. up in alaska. We're in alaska cooper landing is about halfway between stewart and anchorage okay so if you're on the peninsula stewart's mm -hmm. there it's a big stop for the cruise ships and such ah, okay. and they get on the train a lot of times there and go to denali mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> but if you go right up route one Cooper Landing is halfway between Seward and Anchorage. You can see Russia from there, right? No, not from there. If you went out to Homer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but he's right on the Kenai River. Okay. Like, how, how long has he with been, his girlfriend, how, how, Ruth? And, how, how long has he been up there? Three years. Wow. Now, okay. must, must mean he really likes it. I mean, Alaska is beautiful for, there's many reasons to be in Alaska, but he must really like it. Yes. How did Have he get? To, how did he get to Alaska? 
Uh, how did he get there? He drove his pickup truck well, me, in January. Me. What what drove? Good job. I knew you were going to do that. Good job, Lori. <laughs> his pickup truck. I, my old truck. It was standard. So what what made him go to Alaska? Um, when he was at Brockport, he uh, went on a trip during one of the breaks. Okay. They arranged a trip for a bunch of them, and he just loved it. And he hmm. really couldn't find much work around here with what he wanted to do. And he saw a job online and applied and did a FaceTime interview and got the that's, job and packed up his truck and went and his dog. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. A little scary as for a mom, but he's yeah, done all right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that's a lot, a lot of miles away, right? Uh, 5,000 and some. Have you been up there yet? Yes, yes, I have. Nice. Yeah, Sweet. we went uh, two years ago. We would have gone again this last year if it hadn't been for COVID. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. What well, does he does he hunt and fish and do all that kind of thing? No. None of that, huh? <laughs> wow. That's a that's a that's a lot of waste of the no, last. But there. he does have dogs. Yeah. Uh, wow. He hikes. Does he dog sled? He tries <laughs> he... to get his dogs to dog sled. Uh, one's a hound. One's like part husky. His girlfriend has a husky and. Uh, uh, <laughs> I want to say Chihuahua. Yeah, Chihuahua. I, he's not real good at... Uh, I was going to say, he probably gets lost in the snowbanks. Yeah. He's All usually right. tucked into her jacket while the other dogs pull the sled. <laughs> he knows which <laughs> side his butter's breaded on. Right. That's right. <laughs> right. And then I, my youngest son off turned 25, and he's married and has Eli, the grandson you've probably seen pictures of on my Facebook. Very awesome. Yes. Yeah. He's in the Navy. Been in okay. five years. He's he uh, assigned. What's that? What's he do? He's IT okay. for um, the WASP. It's a LHD. Yeah. It's like a mini aircraft carrier. Right. Okay. But right now it's in dry dock, so they're running wires and stuff while it's getting repaired. But he's in Norfolk, so at least they're closer now. He was in Japan for. Uh, three years. Hmm. How many years? That's where he met his wife. So it, it was a good thing he, for him. How many years has he been in now? Five. You think he's gonna make a career out of it? What do you think? Some days, other days. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, you're like, oh, I'm out of here. No, I'll do two more years. No, I'm out of here. No, I'll do four more years. That's how it goes, right, Dave? That's how I was. I mean, every yep. every enlistment, I was like, should I? Shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. I will. I just that's how I was. So. Did you go to Japan and during your service? I have been everywhere. Yeah, I've been to Okinawa. I've been to Japan. I've been I've been to all, everything everything in the Pacific side I've seen. Uh, he uh, was in Yokosuka. Yokosuka, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, he's he's hoping to go back, I guess. Japan was great. Japan's lovely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm lovely. not part of that club. I didn't go to Japan. I went to Japan. Did you? Yeah. Did you like it? It's awesome, isn't it? Yes, it is. Especially yeah. if you have somebody with you that speaks Japanese. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. Yes, that helps a lot. Yeah. Knows the they're lay not, of the land, right? Yeah, they're not like other countries where they have it in English and the other language. Nothing is in English. Really? Nope. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And, and you can't just airport. kind of figure it out because it's similar. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I think the only place it's like the only place I remember seeing signs that were in English were like the airport. It was like some airport signs that were translated to English. That was about it. Pretty much right. you were, you know, just but not on the trains, to... not in the wow. towns or anything. Hmm. So. That would make a guide almost critical. Yes, yes. <laughs> I would I would have spent more time looking at maps and trying to figure things out than I would have enjoying the site. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I can appreciate all that. Yeah. Good. Nope, that was very nice. So, nice. okay, so now, so where are we at in your timeline now? So where are we at? We, we haven't finished your timeline yet, have we? I don't know. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> so, so what are you doing right now? Are you working uh, still? Pardon? Are you working? You're, you're doing the DPW. Town of Ithaca. Town of Ithaca, okay. And right. is your husband right. still funeral director? Um... Is that the right title? He's semi-retired. Yes, he is. Yes, it is. Yep. 
Yep, he's semi-retired. We had a place in Genoa and the place in Groton, and his brother starting to take over. Mm -hmm. So you got any big so, retirement plans? Uh, not till I retire in a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the plan is to, you know, he's going to go down to Virginia and help out with some house projects and He's going to drive a fire truck to Alaska with my other son. <laughs> wow. wow. That could be fun. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're other, actually going to build it right in Genoa. The fire truck. And then they're going to drive it from Genoa to Alaska. Now, are we talking like an antique fire truck or a real modern day usable fire truck? Uh, brand new. the built to order. Really? Was like, there fire <laughs> truck kits out there? How does this work? <laughs> um the place in genoa stonewell is like a metal fabricating they do uh boxes for trucks so say yeah. you're a welder or a plumber or you do mm -hmm. roofing or something they can create all the boxes and stuff on the back of your truck that you want so they're going to take a ford brush truck is what he's getting it's a big like f450 and okay. they're going to create a back end for um other oh, it's a brush truck i don't know whatever can they need for that for firefighting <laughs> wow a brush truck and so so they can yeah is this like an off-road vehicle then too right it'll be four-wheel drive yep yeah but uh yeah to get into some places where bigger fire trucks can't go gotcha and for car accidents and that kind of thing hmm. so. so not like a hook and ladder no, no. There's a lot of places you can't go in Alaska with big trucks. I can imagine. Uh, but yeah, so, you'd have to ask him more details on it. I, I'm not the uh, detailed person when it comes to fire trucks. Yeah, I'm fascinated. I didn't know you could just. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> I'm learning all the time too, Dave. You can order up a truck, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah. I'm on. I'm gonna, well, he yeah. looked at places in like Indianapolis and Texas and all different places, but right in Genoa, they could do the most for the money. Huh. Uh, pretty amazing. It is. Was your son in charge of shopping for it? Yes, he was. Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> you want to shop for a fire truck? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> who, knows? You, who knows when you're going to need a fire truck? You never know. You might need one. So you might better shop for a, a bus for a band or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we're looking for next is a is like an RV to go on tour with. Yeah, that's it. There you go. <laughs> and Pam's gonna be your groupie. Oh no, she's <laughs> she's past groupie point. <laughs> she's past groupie well, point. She's <laughs> like, I've seen them play. Just like my <laughs> wife. She's well past groupie point. <laughs> she's over it. <laughs> He's over it. That's right. I'll be in bed when you get home. Let me know. Yeah, let me know. Yeah, I'd be lock, that way too. Lock the door when you're in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Lori, uh, yes. I've got your book here. Uh, I couldn't find mine. I know it's here that we're moving and I couldn't find it. I was fascinated by, and I correct me if I'm wrong. Well, first of all, I think it's awesome you're in the opening page here. I am. You're on their opening page. I believe what was that's I doing? you. I believe that's you. I can't, if I can't get. Oh, okay. Yep. Hidden um, behind Don. Correct. Yep. Right behind Don. Um, but what I thought was fascinating is I did not see a prophecy for you. I, I didn't create one? You didn't create one. Oh. I, so I, I went to all the Munsons. There's a, you know, there's, and as you know, there's a few of you Munsons out there. You, you, well, you're one of those legacy names in Dryden and the Freeville and the Aetna area. Were all um, the Munsons related so in that yearbook? Um, who do, who are you looking at? Penny, okay. Mary. Penny, Penny Munson. Is Penny yeah. Penny's a cousin? Ken, Penny's a cousin. So yeah. interesting story. I almost became your brother-in-law. <laughs> It'd be cousin-in-law, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, cousin-in-law. Correct. Uh, I I dated Penny for about ten minutes in sixth grade. <laughs> Just ten. <minutes. laughs> I wouldn't. I, I don't know if I'd call that almost. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So in the prophecies, give me a second here. Um, the only months they have is, 
And I didn't even know who this person was. And there's no picture of this person, but there's a prophecy. Uh, in alphabetical order, there's one Munson in the prophecies. Jenny Lee Munson? That's Penny. That's Penny? That they, they put the P and the J? They must have transposed something wrong there. There's a real name, Jenny. Because it actually yeah. says Jenny in yeah. the prophecy, but Penny in her picture. Yeah. Okay. I think they got it wrong. Yes, so her in the middle, Lee. Okay. But yeah, there's no prophecy for you. So now's your chance here on our show to retrospectively. Retrospective, retrospective prophecy. <laughs> I probably would have thought I would have been running a uh, flower shop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Had it all figured out. <laughs> <laughs> So I, was going I did to handle a lot of flowers over the years. I was going to say you almost ran a flower shop, right? Yeah. Well, I had a lot of flowers at funerals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, those, those go together. Yeah. Now, let I'm me ask you a question. Is that how you met your husband? No, actually. No. No. You were doing flowers for a gig? No, he was working at the local used furniture store, and I was uh, making silk flower arrangements there out of stuff and uh, selling he them. Just, and he asked you out. I mean, give us give us the backstory here. Don't don't leave us dangling there. Uh, we both worked at my dad's auction house on the side, and uh, mm -hmm. we had a Christmas party and got dancing at the Christmas party. <laughs> oh, nice! That's uh, great. <laughs> and, and Dave, you might not know this, but Lori here is one of the fastest people to ever grace the Dryden High School track. <laughs> I believe that, yeah. I, I knew that you ran track. I didn't know. She holds a record. Do you still hold that record, Lori? I do not know. I haven't been back since that tour of uh, the high school, uh, one and of our reunions. Tell, I don't remember exactly what it was. I looked up the other day. I already forgot about it. I didn't write it down. What exactly was the record? Uh, the 3,000. Uh, what was 11 it not? minutes and eight seconds. How many minutes? 11. Okay. Yeah. She, uh, when the last time I was at the high school, which was, I don't know, four years ago, I yep. stopped by. She, her name is still on the plaque right there in the main. Really? Yep, on the plaque, up. last one noted, right? Yep, still up there. Hey, huh. how about that? Yeah. I know somebody beat the 1500 one. I think Becky Wanagle beat the 1500 the year after I graduated. Hmm. You were darn fast. Now, did, <laughs> you, did you do track? What years did you do track? Uh, 78, 79, and 80. Now, did you do indoor track or was it all outdoor? Outdoor. I did volleyball. Well, that's right. You did volleyball. You didn't do you didn't do field hockey or anything like that, right? I did field hockey. Did you? Did you do field hockey? Yeah. Maybe that's the picture yeah. I saw. There's another picture in here. I'm thinking, I wonder if that's Lori. There's like a side shot in here. You did floor hockey too, right? <laughs> yes. In the gym. <laughs> that you should remember. I think I was I can't remember. Dave, were you on the floor hockey team? No. With Markel and myself and I want to say Beth played, maybe Annette. I don't. Oh, I think so. I don't ever recall doing floor hockey anything. Oh, it was in the gym, man. It was killer. With plastic hockey sticks and plastic. Plastic box. fucks, yeah. You <laughs> remember that. That's crazy. I don't remember that. Oh, that was, that was a great time. Now, the other thing, Dave, I don't know if you knew or not, but Lori was in the, in the bands for many years. Yes. yes. I, was gonna, I was going to get to that. The oh, yes. Yeah. So give, give, us, give us the music breakdown, Lori. All our guests have had to do Music breakdowns, sports breakdowns in school. So give me your give me your music breakdown. What year did you start what, what playing saxophone? Music? What, what year did you start playing saxophone? Uh, when did we start learning it? Fifth grade. It was fourth or fifth grade. Fourth or fifth grade, yeah. Yep. yep. I continued wow. right through college. Did you? Really? Yep. Played now, in the jazz band at Cobble Skill. Wow. Do Played you still tenor play? sax there. Yeah. Do you still play? <laughs> I tried during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I can sort of. Yeah. It takes a lot of this. Not like you guys. Yeah. No, but I haven't blown a saxophone since leaving Dryden. 
I have a soprano saxophone. I got it auction. Nice. Now, so did you, I, um, did the Cobal Skill jazz band uh, go around places? Did they tour a little bit? No, nah, it was more like a club thing. You okay. just practice one night a week and then did a concert when they had the uh, parents' mm -hmm. weekend or gotcha. alumni weekend. I was wondering yeah. if you took it, it on the road. wasn't a big deal. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Took it on the road. Took it, it on the just road. Just for fun. Keep yep. me out of trouble. But you went to um, you went to a number of the like the what were the the community bands that um, with uh, like the uh, all it was all state bands and stuff like that. I remember you being at one of those or something. Only when the whole band went, I never got picked for anything like that. No, you got picked at least once for that. Uh, I, I think you were in there. Oh, okay. I'll let you think that because I'm not okay. sure. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> what about chorus? Chorus? Were you in chorus? Oh, ever since like fifth grade. Really? Yeah, right oh. through. Yeah. That music. I enjoyed music. Marching it's... band. Did marching band? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Jazz yeah. band, regular band, marching band, uh, chorus. Yep. You were in the stage band too in high school, though, right? Too. Yeah, that's jazz band, right? Okay. Yeah, jazz band. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. That traveled well. <laughs> Got you out of classes, right? That's right. <laughs> that's why we joined. Uh, no, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't. No, not, not Dave. Not Dave. No. Uh, no, you well, played guitar a lot in jazz band, didn't you, Dave? Yeah, I, I always played bass in this in the jazz yeah. band. Yeah. Because they, they yeah, were not looking, saxophone. Right. They were looking for a bass player in the ninth grade jazz band. And they didn't have one anywhere. And so that was when I actually first picked up the bass was in ninth grade. Somewhere before hey. ninth Yep. Oh, I see I didn't know that. I've been doing it ever since, right? Yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that was your that was your first start was jazz band playing bass. Well, I mean, technically, uh, Steve and I, Steve Egger and I started playing over that summer between 8th and 9th. And then there, there was an opening in the jazz band because that was the first year they had started playing that uh, John Godfrey had started playing jazz band again. Oh, and so they needed a bass player and nobody in school played bass because I think Gary Bordenero had uh, graduated by that point. Now, who played in the band that used to play at the Rockathon and that kind of stuff? Well, that was uh, Toby, cute Toby B. Graft and Leon yeah. Heffron, Franz Pisley, um, and uh, Chris Jordan, I thought, played in one of those. There, was a, there were a couple of different Rockathons that we played at. We played one in, huh. in the cafeteria at the high school, I think it was. And one of the one of the elementary schools, and then we played one at the elementary school. Yeah, one at the elementary yeah, school. I remember the. Go ahead. Yeah, I remember the elementary school one. Yeah, there was the stage at the end. That was uh, Toby, Leanne, and I did that one. That's what I thought. Yep, there was just three of us. That's what I thought. <laughs> I, I remember, I Kept remember, us awake. I remember yep. both very well. <laughs> it was noisy enough for everybody. <laughs> I'd give my left leg for uh, some of those recordings. Leanne used to record them all. Well, I record. I, rec he, I remember he recording. Played them all. In a, he, he played in a local band, didn't he? Taylor well, Made. Say it again. What was the last thing? Taylor Made. Did he play in that? He played in a couple of different bands. Um, you know, when we got out of high school, we were playing with Chris Jordan and Nancy Abdallah in Emerald Wood. We were playing like Tweetman's and the Derby and the Arcade and stuff like that. Then when that went away, Leon went to Morrisville for two years. Then he came back to Ithaca and he played with Steve Edgar. And I can't remember the, I think it was Jim, Jim, the bass player. And that was the Kinetics. But he was in a couple different bands, yeah. Uh, in and I, just, around I remember seeing them at, 
He played in a band one time when we were at a fire department function, and I thought it was Taylor made. Could be that. And um, was I there? We, we, I don't think so. Yeah, because the Leon and I and Peg Dutcher at the time played for the VFW up in Dryden one Christmas party. Yeah. And then uh, the Groton Fire Department. Yeah, Leon, Leon used to play in a couple other bands. I can't remember the name of those bands. They were after I'd moved out of the house and out of the area. And to this day, yeah, I'm glad no you're keeping up with it. That's all right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I, uh, cleaning out, I found some pictures. Oh, good. We love these things. Yeah. We love these things. I don't know. I can't really tell who's who in this one, but this is a sixth grade camping trip at Camp Barton. Oh, I love Camp Barton. That was such a great time. Oh, the only man. one I recognize is uh, Mr. Parsons, a sixth grade teacher. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Then, that was such a good time there. This was a snowmobile party we had at Don Alexander's. I remember that too. Look at that picture. That's great. Yeah. Uh, can you see it at all? Yeah. Oh. That looks like Don up and back and. Uh... Is that Plourd over there on the right? I see Steve Plourd. I see yep. Steve Plourd. Yep. I see Annette. I see... Mark holds out being there somewhere. I see Mark <laughs> to, the, to the left of Don, it looks like. Yep, yep, yep. Is that Dana Ayers there to the bottom left of Annette? Yes, it is. I see... Who's... It who's says... Who? I actually wrote on the back, it says... Uh, Tom Ball, Phil Bakke... Uh, Elaine and Jeff Markle, Don Alexander, Dave Jackson, Steve Plourd, Annette Marquis, Dana Ayers, and Sherry Case. You have wow. to you have to scan that and send it out. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a great. Well, I remember. I remember at that uh, snowmobile party, they uh, took we skied behind the snowmobiles. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. Do you remember how foolish that is? I mean, now as an adult, I think that was really stupid. <laughs> that, that was dumb, but we didn't care back then. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. That was a great time. Uh, Dave's in this picture. His senior trip. Oh my lord! <laughs> you have got to send. You got. You got to scan that. You got to do something with it. You got to send me that picture. That's crazy. That Brian Stout, right yeah. to the left? Is oh, that Brian? That's, uh, yeah, I was going to say that's Brian, Brian Stout, Stout there. And Dave and Dan. I didn't have any of you, Dave Seymour. Well, you, you know, I, I didn't. You. I didn't go to. Uh, I didn't go to spring break. <clears throat> oh, because is that wow? Well, that one, was uh, that was uh, uh, Roger Dick and I went skiing. This, this one's Dolene Cameron. And Sherry Case and Barb Sanford and I at the, the Circus World. There you go. There's the make. There's the makeup. There they are. Yeah, I saw uh, Sherry's picture in one of the. Oh, was it Phil's? Yep, Phil's talk you did. Yep. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. That was a. That the was only a other one I have is. Uh, what's that? I said that was that senior trip was miserable for me. And I, and I, like I explained on the one of the previous podcast, I got burnt so bad at uh, <laughs> the Water World or whatever it was. I spent most of the senior trip soaking in the in the pool at the hotel. You cool. weren't glowing on this one. Uh -oh. you and Kevin Costner. Right? <laughs> what, what's this one? This this one, uh, I think you'll. It's Annette's eighteenth birthday. Oh <laughs> man, that I think that was the party for the ages, right? Yeah, I should have brought the one uh, where her uh, cake got destroyed because somebody's face went in it. But I didn't have That's a picture of whoever's face was in it. That's the cake that I made. <laughs> I'm ah, okay. you made well, her who's, cake. Whose face I made ended her up cake, in it? And then I was. This is this is the, just to give you just to put a kind of a sad spin on this whole thing. I was so pissed off about the way the cake was treated. I left the party and went went out with my 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 future wife. <laughs> I left the party. 
<laughs> they, they, they had a food fight with my cake. Nobody had any cake. Nobody had a food fight with it. I'm like, I'm out of here. Uh, laugh, he said, come pick me up. I did, didn't have a picture of that, so I didn't remember that. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's all I got, though. That's awesome. So I just want to give you a heads up. We got like six, seven minutes left. Yeah. I sent out a second invite if we need to continue. Oh, oh I think, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. So awesome to talk to you, Lori. Yeah, it's good to connect with you guys. <laughs> yep. I love you. I love your. I love your family pictures on Facebook. They're so awesome. You got a great looking family. And oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's just so great. It's so great. And now yeah, we've. Uh, we totally moved to the lake now, so. I was yes. going to say, you guys just finished up a lake house project, right? Like a rebuild. Yes, we did. Well, it's been three years now. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And how is lake life? Um, I'll find out once we get settled this winter, because we've just been in the process of packing and moving 35 years worth of stuff. Mm. Sorting yeah. it out, throwing it out, recycling. <laughs> and what, and I, I forget, what lake are you guys on? Owasco. Wasco. And this yeah. is going to be your primary residence then? Yes. Okay. I am yep. I am way envious. Way envious. So when do you, <laughs> well, when you, do you think you're going to put the time. house that you're in on the market? Uh, actually, that's uh, my. it's part of the business because we lived above the funeral home. Ah, okay. It goes yeah. with the business. I see. And you said your husband's brother was taking that over. Yes. Good okay. memory. Yeah. So nice you guys have retirement plan. Oh, you said your what your retirement plans were and Phil's. Yeah. Yeah. No. Any immediate plans? No, I'm for just, travel. No, I just I. Well, I think part of part of the plan is well, it's 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 all in flux. Like I want to go. I've never been to Blanche's. We want to do like a, a a New York historical run. Like I've never been to her father's gravesite and up and up in mm -hmm. Ogdensville, New York, and. We just need to go around and pay our respects to various folks that we've lost over the years. I know we want to do that. And I just, I just want her to, I, I just, I just want to spend some time with my wife because it was so much time on my military career. I didn't get a chance to spend with her. So that's our, our, our thing is just to travel and just go see people and, and just, yeah. And what's your countdown, Dave? What's, uh, your, what's your daily countdown? Stand by. <laughs> He's got a countdown day timer on his phone. Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, we have nine months, 17 days, 19 hours, 23 minutes, and then 10 seconds. Till? Till retirement. I'm retired from Verizon. <laughs> but who's counting? I don't think a countdown would go two years like I need. There's an I think app. it would. There's an app for everything. You can, sit, you can set a timer for anything. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And you already are, right? right. Dave? I had the luxury of retiring last uh, end of the year, so at the end of twenty. All right, I'll have to check in with you and see how it works when uh, I'm ready. But I definitely want to come and visit the house on the lake. Well, as you know, I love lakes. <laughs> you, pro lake, so and you're good. You, you can message me on Facebook anytime. All right, you can, uh -oh. you, you can bet it. You can bet it'll happen. <laughs> All right, dear Lori, it's so great to talk to you. We're going to let you get back to your evening. Much love to you and your family, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Thank guys. You joining, thanks for joining us this evening. Good All to right. talk to you. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.